Welcome back to the Tech Shack to another low quality video. Now I want to start this video out by saying I've always kind of been half in and out of the Linux and Windows ecosystems. In the past I've dual booted my main desktop with Windows and Linux and I've ran some flavor of Linux on my laptop. That was until the last couple of years when I've been exclusively Windows on my main desktop and my laptop. Now because of the fact that I've been half in and half out, my main workflow has been mostly open source and apps that are native in Linux already. So the, the switch from Windows to Ubuntu Studio, which is what I'm running now, has been very, very smooth for me. But for many people, it might not be. Especially if you're running like Adobe or you must run Microsoft Office. All right, and we'll get into the Microsoft Office in this video too. Now, it hasn't also been a completely smooth transition. All right, Dolphin, for one, it was a major issue, at least for network shares, because every time I try and map or mount a network share, it, Dolphin would crash. Now, Files, the other file manager, and Terminal has no problem mounting it, so that was a pretty easy issue to fix. Um, and then, when I rendered my last video, right after I rendered it, we had a power outage. Unfortunately, this was my fault, but I've been working from my secondary SSD that was still formatted in NTFS from when I was Windows 11. All right, so because of that, once I rebooted the system, it would not mount that drive. So I pulled that drive out, put it in my Windows server, and was able to read the files, back everything up, wipe the drive, I put it back in the workstation, um, formatted, it, formatted it in EXT4, and then transferred all the data back from the NAS, and I haven't had an issue since. And part of that's my own fault. From my own experience with Linux, I should know that FAT32, extended FAT, those are okay for going back and forth. But if you have a working directory like that, that you're using like that in Linux, you want to make sure that's formatted for Linux, unless it's portable, and then you can get away with FAT. Like all right, now let's talk about the good. The reason why this is the first time you're seeing a video like this in a long time is this camera, Windows, I hate this camera with Windows. All right, it's a Razer camera. As soon as you plug it in, it will not work until you install the Razer software. As soon as you plug it into the computer, it prompts you, you must download Razer software. And then you are very limited to what you can do with this, this camera. And Linux, not only does this camera work right out of the box, but I have access to some of the color correction and all the other settings on this camera that are normally locked. All right, so not only does this camera work in Linux, but it works much, much better and much more reliable. In fact, in Windows, I couldn't even record this long before, and half the time it would crash, and I'd have to literally uninstall the driver and reinstall it before the camera would work properly. And judging by forum posts and other help me posts online, a lot of other people were having the same problems. Another thing I really like about Linux that it handles better than Windows is one, the display driver being an AMD card, no more driver crashes, and two, scaling is much, much better. Now I'm looking off because I have monitors everywhere. Now over in that corner is a 4K um, monitor and it's kind of far off, but with Linux, I can go in and set the scaling, set it up to 200%. It still looks crystal clear and I can read it from this distance and still use that monitor. Before, with Windows, that monitor was strictly for video watching and for monitoring the uh, security cameras. Now I can actually use that monitor and read what's in it. And then I have my two 1440p top and bottom. And I keep looking over at my notes. So if you see me looking over this way, it's because kind of my notes are right here on everything. So yeah, graphics, everything works so much better, so much more stable. Um... Again, I do most of my video editing in Shotcut, and I do all my thumbnails and stuff in GIMP. And since both are native applications, both perform much, much better. Now you are, depending on what video um, program you use for editing. If you're editing video in Linux, one of the um, drawbacks is some of the restricted codecs that you might not have access to or have access to easily within Linux. I don't use any of those codecs. I film on my phone. I film on this webcam for this type of stuff, and I, then I film on GoPros, so none of which has any sort of fancy codecs or any high resolution, it's just 4K 30, or, you know, higher frame rate, 1080p, so 
I don't have any of those codec issues, so for me this thing renders much, much faster. I much more prefer the customization options. Um, I'm a KDE fan. I've always been a KDE fan. If you watch some of my other videos, and you'll see I have Rocket Dock up at the top on my secondary screen, and that's because in all my other devices that were running some flavor of Linux, it was usually KDE, and that allowed me to create your own little custom start menus, your own custom task menus, and more importantly for me, a dock with my most important applications, because then I go ahead and I hide all the desktop um, shortcuts. I do not like anything on the desktop. So I like I like having the dock to have ready access to all the programs I use most frequently. So that was always what I was replicating in Windows with Rocket Dock, and now I kind of have all that customization back natively in the OS and in the UI. All right. Now another thing I found much easier with with the App Store in here, I'm able to get like search through, get all the apps I need natively. But I've also been able to find a lot of apps that make things much much easier for me. Um, in Linux than it was in Windows. For instance, Remote Desktop Protocol. All right, I'm using this, I think it's called Remia. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, but that application is so much better for remote desktop. I have granular control over everything. So if you're you know, far away, you can turn the settings way down, hide wallpapers, make it really basic so it's still responsive. Or if you're like me, and you have your main server on the same switch as your workstation and the server is 10 gigabit and your workstation is two and a half gigabit you could turn everything way up and things get so smooth that you almost forget that you're in a remote environment i absolutely love that application that's the best remote desktop application i've ever used especially for the rdp protocol all right um screenshots i'm using gradia to take screenshots on windows I would have to use a snipping tool and then use another program to add like any notes or annotation. I can do all of that right in one app. I absolutely love that app. I highly recommend it. Um, and then when all right, I touched on it earlier, Microsoft Office. Now I have a five PC license for Office 365 for my business. So while you may think I'm missing that, I am keeping my laptop Windows. So I have that. I have kids who can use that license and. I can log into the web portal from for the IT business and do any of the collaborative stuff that I need to from the web versions of the application. Locally, I'm running WPS Office, which is like pretty much a one-to-one -one clone of Microsoft Office. It's way better than LibreOffice. I highly re recommend WPS Office. It's great. It's fantastic. Um, I'm not missing anything in the Office front. And as far as other business applications. Um, QuickBooks, I use the cloud or the online version of QuickBooks, so that's a web browser on the PC or an app on my phone. So again, nothing's changed there. The remote support client that I use and my ticketing portal, while they do have a Windows app, that's just a Chromium wrapper, okay, that loads their website. I can do everything from the web browser. So realistically, I just have to open Chrome and click the link on my favorites bar, and I'm right there. So, so Everything I use for my business, I can either has a Linux alternative or a web portal that gives me full features that I need. So I'm not missing anything there. OpenRGB is a great piece of software. Now I am missing some of the audio effects and some of the preset effects, but you have so much granular control with OpenRGB. I can set each individual LED on the RAM sticks. There's it's absolutely like great little piece of software. It's a little bit um, of a learning curve and then a little bit tedious because you have to program so much. But again, I'm not missing anything. And in fact, I like being able to set things this granular because I like this setup that I have now. I think it's kind of the perfect blend. It's not over the kill RGB. It's very, I guess, classy almost if RGB can be classy. Um, Discord. It's just, it's just a Discord app, like in every platform, it's essentially just a Chromium wrapper that goes to their website. Um, Steam, this is probably the only place I feel like I'm missing anything, because 100% of the games that I play in Steam still work. Unfortunately, I don't game much in Steam. If you watch some of my other videos where we've tested graphics cards and stuff, I'm using Game Pass. Alright, that's what I use for most of my gaming. However, I have three gamer daughters. And they were currently sharing a game pass and my 
youngest daughter's only six, so she doesn't game that much. So now my older two daughters can play the same game at the same time if they want to, and one of them can just use my account. All right, and I do have um, what I dubbed the guest PC for the house for when my kids have friends over and they want to game together. All right, so that is a lower-end gaming PC. But 99% of the time when I game, I'm gaming with them, and that's the computer I use. So really, this is just kind of motivating me to build a smaller form factor PC for the house for me to game in with my kids and make this just a straight workstation. When it comes to work and getting work done, this thing is phenomenal. This this computer looks like new since I recased it. It feels like new with Ubuntu Studio. Everything runs better. Everything is smoother. I absolutely just love the way this thing came out. But yeah, that, that's pretty much like it. Like I'm using OBS Studio right now. That was built in to this distribution. That's the same as Windows. Like I am missing some codecs, but again, this is a 5800X 3D. So for this little bit of video rendering, it's not even doing anything. Even if I run it on CPU, I can still do like five more of these encodes at the same time. So I'm not really, again, missing anything. This, this runs so much better. Not missing anything. I don't feel like I'm missing anything. But yeah, I'm running OBS right now because it's built right in to the um, ISO, to the installation. Just about everything I used was built into the installation and just about anything you can need is in the app store. But as someone who's been in and out of the ecosystem and never fully committed on his desktop, this is the first time I'm running without a safety net, but this is also the first time I've ever ran Linux as a daily driven operating system and felt like, wow, this is great, but X is missing. Nothing is missing. Everything works as it should. Everything works better than it did in Windows. I just, I couldn't be happier. I was not expecting the switch. I don't even know why I switched other than like I did the new casing and it looked like a new computer and I kept thinking about it and I just, I pulled the trigger and I'm so happy I did. But that is it for this low quality video. I will see you guys in the next one. I guess old Giordo didn't need me for this one. I'm an entire Linux container myself. Whatever then. See you next time.